Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where I would still like to move to somewhere that's maybe a little more difficult and also a little less Highlands. <laughs> that would be nice. But we really haven't taken enough damage to justify moving, I don't think. The Annihilator is 29 days out. Everything else is super close. We're going to take forward a couple days and get all of those non-Annihilator mechs back. There we go. We'll unpause that, hop into the mech bay, double check that they're all fine. They should be. Yes, indeed, they are all fine. And we will then hop into the barracks as soon as Rogue Tech gets caught up with us here. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll hop back into the barracks here, make sure that everybody is promoted that can right be. Muffin Top is getting very close to being maxed out, but she is aye not aye. there yet. Anybody yes, actually need a promotion? That's a negative. Okay, so I think that we should attempt to find some damage here. By that, I mean to our own mechs. So, how do we want to do that? Well, there's this assassinate mission. This is a, the a, allegedly hardest mission that's available. I think we'll go ahead and run this. We don't really care necessarily that much about salvage. Maybe we just run it straight down the middle. There's no free priority salvage here. So I guess that's okay. The Steiners are going to be kind of salty at us, but you know, whatever. I'm sure they'll be fine. This is completely good to go. No problem here. This is an assassinate mission in the Highlands. Darius is a moron, and we are going to continue. <laughs> completely ignoring everything that Darius has to say about it is the way forward. So an assassinate mission, of course in the highlands could mean that we're going to be limited pretty heavily to indirect fire. Hopefully that won't be the case because we can cruise through a lot faster if we're not limited to indirect fire. Not to say that we can't win with indirect fire. That's not a statement that I'm willing to make. Our indirect fire is still reasonably strong, a lot stronger than a lot of what we're going up against, but it is not as decisive as our direct fire is with like the dual the the dual dual mrm 40s if that makes sense we've got two mechs that each have dual mrm 40s do a lot of damage and we've got a number of gauss rifles and heavy ppcs things like that need a line of sight so we're better off with a line of sight which is one reason why I'd like to go to a place with a little bit less Highlands. But for now, we need to defeat the Elite Mech Warrior and escape. An Elite Mech Warrior has been deployed to take command of Lyran forces in this system. We need a skilled mercenary force to remove this Mech Warrior before they reach their command while they're only lightly escorted. Every downed mech will help our cause, so there will be a bonus for complete destruction of the target's supporting forces. Additionally, the Mech Warrior's command may send out an escort unit to meet them. Expect enemy reinforcements once you engage. The Lyran Mech Warrior is headed to a major military compound on Carver where they'll take command of a company-sized mech force and become untouchable. They're en route to the encampment, but until they arrive, they're vulnerable. Cool. So we're expecting to fight at least a full enemy company. That's what happened last time. This is looking good for us, actually. The target and their escorts will be moving through this area. A group of military units in this vicinity. Take them out, then head for the evac zone. Yeah, this looks reasonable if we can land, like, up here? Uh, where are we? Ah. If we can land, like, up here? We can make our way down and come in like that on the road. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this landing site. We may end up having, actually we could land like over here. Be able to dip down out of LOS if we wanted to. Or we could land over here and just push in like this. Um, I'm leaning towards landing over this way. We have le less cover though, that's for sure. And the terrain is less rough over this way. Actually, let's land over here. I don't think we have any allies to worry about. But let's see where those supporting forces end up being. This is the target. If I were planning an ambush, this is where I'd put it. Indeed, and they're rear attacking us. Okay. They're shooting at me. 
So what do they what do they have over there? That's a Vulture Mark IV. It just ace piloted. And it's a Centurion. All we see over there is a Centurion. Vulture Mark IV, Annihilator, Marauder. Okay. I think that this is Ready completely fine. This Marauder hasn't moved yet. I'm going to reserve. Now, we're assuming that there's three more units over here that we don't see. The Annihilator is going to go rear arc attacking our Mauler there. I didn't actually right think they'd have rear arc on the Mauler. Oh, they don't like me at all. Reporting. Serious armor I guess walk. it would, yeah. Okay. Awaiting orders. Well, we're not going to reserve anymore. We're going to move up with our awesome over here. And that Annihilator needs to go. It's got LBXs. Okay. So actually at that range, that's not that terrible. 35% hit odds is non-awful. We'll go ahead and boost them up with Warlord. And that boosts us up to 42%. And let's just, just get started on that Annihilator. Not much for major hits there, but that's okay. Okay, they sensor lock are awesome. That's fine. This is phase 16. So we are expecting this Marauder to move. We're kind of pincered right now, but I'm reasonably okay with it. When it's thinking like this, the frame rate drops so low. Because it's using the main thread to think on. The Marauder is going for the awesome, and this is exactly what I hoped would happen, actually. I just want to check its final position here. Yes, its final position is fine. By. The Mauler is going to turn around here. Roger that. And expose our frontal armor. And then we're going to fire on their Marauder, which is overheating. We're going to Warlord it to boost these odds a little bit. I was expecting these odds to be slightly higher. That said, the Heavy Gauss Rifle did get damaged through armor, which was unlucky. But that's still some solid damage to that Marauder. I like it. Okay, this is going to be somebody off over this way, I think. Actually, no. Okay, it's this guy. Cool. So, next up is our Salamander. The Salamander is going to move in to this same side arc. We are going to Warlord for clustering. And I actually expect that this Marauder could die here. I don't really think it's hugely likely, but it could happen. Firing. I maybe should have fired AX missiles, now that I think about it. That is a leg destruction. And a cluster Report. ammo explosion that was redirected. That's a lot of crits. Okay. So this Marauder is pretty done so. Their Marauder moves up, fires on our Mauler. This is unsurprising. It's got LBX, so that's okay for now. Not much armor left in that location. We're doing okay for now. The Corsair is going to move up and finish the job on that Marauder, I hope. We have good hit odds here, so let's see. I'm not going to Warlord. Yeah. Target down. So we can evac at any point that we want to already. Beautiful. However, I'm not ready to evac. Our Bull Shark is going to step up over here. Rolling. And we are going to launch artillery at, I think this Vulture Mark IV is the one that is what I will consider most centrally located. Although maybe we should fire at the Annihilator. It is already weakened. Hit odds are virtually the same. Slightly higher on the LRM-20, so let's do it this way. Nice hit there. Beautiful. Okay, phase 13, they are moving someone who is not in this lance. Yes. The Mad Cat Mark II is going to sprint up over this way. We don't get into range. That's fine. Our Orion moves up. No, not the awesome. The Orion moves up. And we are going to fire once again on this Annihilator. I'm going to Warlord. I want that Annihilator gone. Even though it is just LB-10X. But that makes him unsteady. That's exactly what I'd hoped for. And the boar's head is going to move up over this way. Advancing, I guess. And once again, we're going to drop artillery right on that annihilator. Okay. Firing everything. Not a great sniper artillery shot. Better on the arrow four. Okay. 
So we have multiple unsteadies over here. And they move relatively late. All we see over here is the Centurion. And that was the only thing that ever fired from over this direction. But there is actually an Austal over there as well. Okay. The Mad Cat Mark II is going to sprint forward over here. I would like it to get in range, but it doesn't. Not enough is the answer. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so this is also somebody off over on this flank. So they have a full lance over there, it looks like. The Orion is going to move up, and we are going to fire on that Annihilator yet again. That's absolutely our best hit odds. Uh, we have the same hit odds on the other mech over there, but the Annihilator is the one to go for. Nice. So its armor is basically half gone at this point. There's also this Marauder with the Stealth Field Generator. The Vulture Mark IV moves up, fires on our Mauler. Does a decent amount of damage. That's to be expected. The Mauler's armor is getting low, to be sure. Orders. The Mauler is going to back off. Can we get into cover here? We can't. I'm going to Vigilance the Mauler. And we're going to get an Evasive, evasive Pip here. That. And then we're going to fire once again on that Annihilator, I think. Unless hit odds are better elsewhere. They're pretty bad everywhere. Okay. Well, we'll just fire on the, on the Annihilator, see what happens. Nothing. Okay, that's fine. We want to protect to the Mauler here. Standing and so by. the Awesome is going to step in directly in front of the Mauler. And we're going to fire on the Annihilator once again. The Vulture Mark IV is going to become a target very soon, but it's not a target just yet. And the reason for that is because that Annihilator's armor is so low and it's unsteady. Shooting at the boar's head is fine. I don't care about that. And the Marauder just failed a shutdown override. That's actually a pretty big deal. I'm here. Okay. Well, the Corsair is going to move up over here to finish off the trifecta of defending the Mauler. And we can fire on that Marauder... That's by far our best hit odds. We may also stray shot somebody up in this area. So let's go ahead and do that. What are the odds that we actually get a head hit here? Pretty low, but whatever. Okay, I'm on it. Okay, sounds good. Two hits there. The Annihilator backs off, fires on the awesome. Okay, just doing a lot of AoE damage there, and that's why Losing we want that armor. guy gone. Losing armor. Oh, yeah. My armor's melting off. The Night Star moves up, goes for the Corsair. Does some decent damage to it. But we're going to have the, this Lance dealt with quite soon, so that's fine. Waiting for orders. And this Lance is the dangerous one. The Bull Shark is going to step up here, and these guys are clustered together with the Marauder being the central the central point here. I don't want the right torso. Just, just go for the head. Odds are low, but whatever. Excellent. Next up is going to be our Salamander, which will step forward here. And we could go for the Vulture Mark IV here, or we could go for the Marauder. The Marauder actually is the better target. Do we fire AX rounds here? Yes, I think our hit odds are good enough that we do this. This is going to do a lot of armor strip on the Marauder and could even easily kill it. I'm on him. And there we go. The Marauder is out of here. Target down. Fantastic. Next up yep, is going to be the though. Boar's Head, which is going to move up over this way. And we're going to drop artillery at this point. I feel like it has to be on the Annihilator. I'm not super pleased with the spread out of them. Actually, are we better off at this point firing on these guys? I think we are. They've got an Austal and a Centurion. Neither of those are particularly heavy. So we're going to go for the Austal here. Okay. Good armor strip there. And there may be two more mechs over there as well. Ready for order. So at this point, our Mauler moves. And we're going to position it off over here. Position confirmed. 
We're going to Vigilance it as well. It's taken a lot of armor damage. We want to prevent that, if at all possible. We can fire on any of these. Hit odds are not great. I'm actually just going to brace it. We're braced, in covered, and we are bulwarked. So the Vulture Mark IV moves up and fires on nothing. The All still moves up. It doesn't have LOS. Okay, they're shooting at the Mauler. That's a structure exposure there. We only had the one armor left in that arm, but that's fine. The Awesome is going to close in over this way. And we can fire on any of these. Uh, the Annihilator might be the best odds here. Yes, the Annihilator is indeed the best odds. We can't Warlord just yet, but we can continue to armor strip this gentleman. He needs to go. There's no doubt about that. So we'll go ahead and do that. He gets to move not this phase, but next phase, unless we do something about it. The Night Star moves up, goes for the Salamander. Gets some decent hits in there, but overall, we're fine. Getting banged up real good here. Who do we move next? That is our Orion. Okay, that's actually kind of ideal. We'll position it here. Position confirmed. And I want to continue to hit that Annihilator, unless the hit odds are just tremendously better elsewhere. They are actually better on the Night Star for the LRMs, but I, I think the Annihilator is the bigger threat. We go for that. It's only a slight increase Target on acquired. the Night Star. So we hit him with the Gauss and a number of those missiles, and actually, he's just gone. Engine destruction with a crit there. We just I'm barely penetrated the armor. That was lucky. That was a lucky shot there. Okay. Commander. So the Madcap Mark II is going to close in over here. And it is now in range to MRM this Vulture Mark IV. We will Warlord to boost those odds a little bit. We're at the extreme edge of the range. Got it. Cool. Some armor strip there will do just fine. The Corsair will move up. Our odds are probably going to be best on the Night Star, is my guess. Actually, note the Vulture Mark IV is the way to go here. Good armor hits there, by and large. Could have been better, but pretty good. Standing by. The Bull Shark is going to move over this way, and we're going to start looking at artillerying these guys, of course. We're going to continue hitting the Austal for right now. Okay, good armor strip there. Beautiful. Actually, that's in a structural exposure on the Austal, and that is in the rear arc. I don't know how helpful that really is, but the boar's head is going to position out over here. Moving to position. Shouldn't have done that. We just exposed the mauler, but these guys have already moved, so I guess that's okay. We're going to continue hitting the Austal at this point. Affirmative. Some decent damage there. Their armor is definitely lower. Confirmed. The Salamander is going to close in over here. It can hit either of these targets. And the Vulture Mark IV is probably the better one. Yes. Especially if we're going to fire AX. Are we? I believe we are. Do it. Affirmative. That's an ammo explosion. Very nice. Critical hit. And some heavy laser destructions as well. So this Vulture Mark IV is very close to dead. Waiting Our Mauler more. is going to move up over here. And I'm going to Vigilance it. We're going to fire on that Vulture Mark IV. I think it dies here. I'll be there. We did miss one of those heavy Gausses, but it's still dead. Beautiful. So next up is the, the Night Star doesn't move until phase 16. That's good for us. The Centurion moves in now, goes for the Boar's Head. That's all armor damage on the Mauler, so we're happy about that. Reporting light damage. The Madcap Mark II is now going to step in front of the Mauler. This isn't really going to block the LOS here necessarily until the Awesome moves in, but we'll just go ahead and do that. And we're hoping to reserve this guy back, but it's unlikely. That'll do some armor strip, though, for sure. That is actually a head hit. 
but he doesn't get moved back in the move order, and he gets to move basically right away. He could easily go for the Mauler here. Let's see what he does. He goes for the Salamander and misses everything. Okay, that's fine. I don't care about that. <laughs> the Mauler got pretty mauled at the beginning here, but it's fine. The Orion moves up. And we're going to Warlord this. We're going to hit this Night Star reasonably hard here, and we're going to fire our LRM 20s with standard ammo. Firing. We missed the Gauss, but that's okay. Some good missile damage there. Okay. Yep. The Salamander continues to close in. Its heat is getting up there. We're going to fire our MRM 40s, but it's not going to be in AX mode. It's going to be in improved mode. Copy that. So once again, a big armor strip on that Night Star. And that's another head hit. Injury resisted, though. Okay, so the Corsair is going to close in over this way, close up this gap. Copy that. And we'll just fire the Light Gauss. I'm not expecting too aye much aye. out of that. We do get one hit there, though. Not too aye bad. Aye. The Awesome closes in. Roger that. And the armor on this Night Star is starting to get pretty suspect. Copy that. Let's see if we get anything major here. I'm not expecting huge damage, but... That's pretty good, actually. We lost yep, him his better. evasive. The bull shark is going to move over this way. way. Now, these guys are a bit spread out. I'm going to go for the centurion here. Because we don't know where the other two mechs over here are. And I'm assuming that the centurion is more centrally located than the others are. So we'll do that for the moment. The boar's head is also going to head over this direction. But actually, I missed the centurion there. I mispositioned slightly. So we're going to have to go for the hostel. Some nice internal damage there, but we can't get crits when we don't hit directly like that, so it is what it is. Round 28, they have a mover in. And that's the Austal. Okay. It just moved down into here, so the Centurion is a better oh, yeah. target for us. The Mauler actually had its leg armor be what was revealed. I assumed that it was this arm. But no, it wasn't. Interesting. We're going to move it slightly forward here. Are we going to fire this? Not, I think, firing over our, our mech here. We're going to brace it. Okay. Let's see what they do. Shooting at the boar's head. A lot of hits landing up here, but that's fine. Damage looks light, Commander. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that damage. I'm internal damage. Oh, you're fine. Okay, there's a lot of movers over here that we still don't see. The Night Star moves up, shoots at our Bull Shark of all things, and completely whiffs. I love it. Cool. Order. So at this point, the Orion is going to step up. Move order received. And we're going to hit that Night Star. Odds are not the best, mostly because this Zeus is jammed. But target. let's go ahead and see what we get there. That's actually a lot of armor damage. Structure exposure and a heat sink crit there. Crit that is a big deal. Ready. That guy's dead. He just doesn't know it yet. The Madcap Mark II is going to Getting advance out. as much as possible, and we're going to crit fish. We can't get away with a Warlord, but we don't need one. All we need to do is fish for crits in that CT. Fire. And there we go. That's exactly what we were looking for. Enemy down. So now all that's left are the flankers. The Corsair can immediately start turning around and heading over this way. It doesn't get LOS, obviously, but let's see what it can do over there. The Awesome is also going to head over this way, and it can start lobbing some LRMs at this Centurion. We don't have sensors on the Austal anymore, but we could get a kill on the Centurion with that exposed structure. It doesn't happen, but it could have. The Salamander is going to turn and start sprinting over through the woods over here. Cool. I'm receiving. And the bull shark is going to move on up. We're going to fire on the centurion. We could kill the hostile just with splash damage at this point, I think. It's in this vicinity, so it took some damage from that shot. But we don't know exactly the current state of it. The boar's head moves up and also fires on the centurion, which has basically no armor left. 
And actually, that's the Centurion gone. And the Austal gone. So we don't actually know where the other mechs are. We're going to leave the Mauler where it's at. Its armor took an absolute beating in the first round there. But the Orion is going to sprint over this way. Are we going to exit combat? We may exit combat after this round. The Mad Cat Mark II is going to close in over this way. Whatever they are, they don't show up on sensors very well. So the Corsair is going to move up over here. I mean, we know the vicinity that they're in, right? So that's fine. The Boar's Head will sprint up. And sink its heat on out. Same with the Bull Shark, although it doesn't have much heat to sink. I'd love to catch them on sensors, but our sensors are still pushing through that uh, ravine. So they may just be out of sensor range, for all we know. They might be up over here. We'll see. Whatever they are, they don't have indirect fire weapons. We know that for a fact. So the awesome will close on in, and I do expect us... We didn't drop out of combat. Yes, Commander. I expected us to, there. Going full throttle. Huh. We have no idea where they are. You. Okay. Ready for orders. Well, we'll close in as much as we can, Golly. and they're going to run out of space in this ravine soon enough. It will take some time, though. So we're going to move in, and you can see our sensors have moved up to here now. Where are they? Aye, aye. We could just move to the evac zone. That is an option. Right. Full speed. The evac zone is over here. That would take us a little while to get to, but it wouldn't be too, too bad. The awesome moves go. up. I want to eliminate them. That would be my preferred method yes, here. Matter. The bull shark is going to close in. Let's go. Ah, there's a devastator. Now we have a target. We're going to drop a long tom on him. Not a great shot, but we did eliminate some of his armor there. Standing by. The boar's head is going to move up and do the exact same. On my way. Okay. We'll take Fire a again. little bit more armor off of him. In fact, that was a pretty good chunk of armor that we removed there. For cool. orders. So the Mad Cat Mark II is going to advance up over here. Confirm. We're hoping that we see the other one soon. Aye, or aye. that it's just stacked together. That, that's a possibility. The, the Awesome closes in over here, and we're just going to lob a couple LRMs at this Devastator. Rock we don't know when it moves, but that should make it unsteady. Yes, Commander. I think. The Mauler is going to move up and brace. Just in case. I'm here. The Corsair is going to sprint in over going here. If we enter down here, we can exit, I believe, over here. We're unlikely to get LOS anytime soon, though. Commander? So the Orion closes Confirm. in, and we're just going to continue to drop LRMs on this Devastator. We'll Warlord that, boost our hit odds a bit. Okay, got some armor removed there. Ah, so Fafnir, and it's up over here. Cool. We actually are interested in Fafnir parts. So the Bull Shark is going to position up over here. And we're going to continue hitting this Devastator for right now. We know that the Fafnir is not close to the Devastator. That's a little sad. But let's see what he does. Positioning just over there? Not a big deal. Cool. So the Salamander is going to advance down into the ravine over here. Yes, and our boar's head is going to step up and continue to drop artillery on that Devastator. For an alpha Not a great shot there. That was a pretty good shot. Cool. Okay. Orders. Our Orion is going to move on up. And drop additional LRMs. Engaging target. Once again, like I said, our indirect isn't the best, but it's not awful. It's better than what they've got, anyway. So the Devastator moves back to where it was originally, pretty much. 
Okay. Standing Our Madcap Mark II is going to advance into the ravine. Roger. Time. I don't think we're going to be getting LOS anytime soon. Or perhaps Mauler ever moves. on these guys. So the Mauler moves up and Aye. the Corsair is going to sprint down further Roger. into the ravine. Will we have to careful maneuver down this? I don't think so. I think we'll be okay. Right here. The boar's head is going to step up onto this rough terrain. I'll try. And we're going to continue to hit this Devastator, which has very little armor left where it matters at this point. The sniper artillery doing nothing of note there. Landing on the wrong side of this hill. But we did do some damage with the arrow four. The salamander moving down into the marsh. And we'll just make our way through as quick as we can. Which isn't Three tremendously quarters. quick. But our bull shark is going to close on in here. And fire on that devastator. We could easily kill it here. We don't, but it's very close. Heavy damage. That yep, devastator yep. is going to die on any moment now, actually. Literally any shot could kill it. Confirmed. That was all armor damage there. Okay. So they move right away. Is that their Fafnir? Yep, that would have been their Fafnir. I'm receiving you. The Orion moves on up. Primitive. And we're going to lob another round of LRM-20s oh, nah. in there. Once again, any one of these could kill it. None of them do. But that's a knockdown. And maybe an ejection. He should eject here, in all honesty. But he doesn't. Okay. Good to go. The Madcap Mark II is going to advance into the swamp. Commander. And the Mauler is just going to continue heading on forward. No shooting. Fafnir's are direct fire mechs, so that's not going to be too concerning for us just yet. We're going to move the Corsair into the swamp. Orders. And the Salamander is starting to get into ATM range oh here. What are our ATM hit odds right now? 37? We'll take it. Ten four. We hit none of those. Sad. <laughs> Stand still, dummy. Oh, he's standing still. He's knocked down. He is not going anywhere. The bull shark is going to move up and look to finish the job on the Devastator. This is actually our last round of ammo on the LRM-20. That's a lot of crits. And an ejection. Cool. So now we need to get the Fafnir. The Awesome is going to advance, and we're hoping to get a sensor trace on it. We haven't yet. Yes, Commander. The Boar's Head is just going to stay put and sink his heat. Okay. Orders. Madcap Mark II advancing through the swamp. Run, don't shoot. Got it. The Fafnir moves now. We know it's up in this region-ish. We don't know exactly where. The Mauler is just trying to stay safe, mostly. Yes, Commander. The Orion would love to have a, a sensor trace on it, oh, but me. no such luck. Okay. So the Salamander is going to start heading up. Go ahead and sprint. Start heading up over this way. I think go we can back. get up. Let's well, go. not this. We can't get up this, but we can get up over here. So yeah, that'll be a little bit. The Awesome is really going to be what's going to be scouting for us. The Bull Shark will move up and brace. Standing by. The Corsair is going to exit the swamp. Cool. Right here. Boar's Head braces for now. Guess I'll vent some heat while I wait. And the Awesome moves up. Confirmed. And do we have eyes on? We do have eyes on that Fafnir. So we're going to Vigilance the Awesome. That Fafnir probably hurts. But now that we have a sensor trace, or really direct LOS, Engage we can hopefully start. start doing things to him. That's a sensor impairment, which is actually a pretty big deal right now. Because like I said, that Fafnir is going to hurt. Standing by. The awesome actually moves instantly again. But I'm going to reserve it. I want to allow the Fafnir to move here. Okay, he mostly misses. And the reason that I reserved was that I wanted to maintain the two evasive Damage and the, uh, the the vigilance there. So that's good. The Orion now moves up into the swamp. And it will begin lobbing LRMs at this Fafnir. 
We need to strip armor off of them. And we are succeeding in doing that somewhat. Commander. So the Madcap Mark II is going to sprint over here, exiting the swamp. Commander. At this point, the awesome moves up. Moving out. Remaining in the cover. And we're going to fire on this Fafnir. We have good hit odds here. I'm going to boost them even higher. Copy that. Nice. Fafnir, Fafnir taking some Still reasonably heavy damage remaining. there. I like it. Next oh, yeah. up is going to be the Mauler. The Mauler is mostly wanting to stay safe. It enters the swamp. Sounds good. Aye, aye. The Corsair is going to move on up over this way. Maybe there isn't a way out of here. I should have checked that. Uh, no, there is a way out. It's just a little ways away. Okay, cool. Standing the boy's head is, of course, going to drop artillery on this Fafnir. It only has two turns left of ammunition for his artillery. But that, I believe, is a knockdown on the Fafnir. Not quite, but the right. Long Tom will definitely get us there. Cool. Got it, Commander. Kaboom. That's a structure exposure on the Fafnir into a knockdown. Beautiful. Only minus one initiative from the knockdown, but that's okay. The Salamander is going to sprint its way over here. We can fire the ATMs, and what are our hit odds? Only 22%, but we're going to try fishing in this torso a little bit. We made him panicked anyway. So next up is our Orion, which is going to move up. And once again, we're going to fish in that torso. We are running out of standard ammo. Primitive. Gauss rifle explosion. That's nice. Reporting critical hit. So that's basically half of that Fafnir's armament gone. Just like that. Cool. I got you. Once again, we're going to crit fish in that torso. Actually, the torso is straight up gone. So I don't care where these hit. Then. I got you. Nice. Armor reduction there. Long -range missiles are out. Well, they're ATMs, but Ready. sure. Madcap Mark II is going to move up over Ready. this way, heading for the exit of this ravine. Awaiting and the orbit. awesome is pretty much just going to stay exactly where it's at. We're going to fire on the Fafnir here, looking for a CT hit. Solid CT hits there. I like it. Standing by. The bull shark is going to continue to drop long toms. We've still got another 10 long tom rounds. Locked and loaded. Here it comes. Not a great shot there, but that's a pilot ejection. Very nice. Let's get out of here. So it's going to take a while to strap all that armor back onto the mauler, right? I mean, it didn't really take much internal damage, although we are going to need to repair that heavy gauss rifle. That's not a big deal, but we'll have to repair it. It's not like we have to replace it or anything, but... That's fine. I mean, the through armor was un unlucky, but we'll take it. So I'm interested in the Fafnir part, but I'm really more interested in Fafnir 2s. But we'll just go ahead and take the Fafnir parts for now. Fafnirs are a solid mech. I like them. So that'll be fine. We've got the advanced TC here. We've got two of them. Guardian ECM. We've got two of those. We've got the generic structure. We don't need generic structure. 12 Gauss ammo. We don't need 12 Gauss ammo. Okay, that'll be fine. Now, the question is, did we take enough damage to justify going somewhere else? That is a good question. The Mauler did, but did anyone else? The Mauler will be out, but we can replace that with the Battlemaster. Questions, questions, questions. I do expect that it'll be somewhere around at least 200k to repair the Mauler. It took a lot of armor damage. There's no doubt about that. It got hit hard right away. <laughs> Just right off the bat. That Annihilator actually did do a lot of damage. So maybe. Maybe it's enough to justify moving. I would like to get out of, out of these Highlands, so that would be absolutely nice. Okay, 260,000, 42 days for the repairs. It's not actually going to be 42 days, but it'll be a while for sure. Like I said, the Mauler will take quite a bit of time to put that back on. So let's see, 18 days for the Mauler, 23 for the Annihilator, 8 for the Corsair. 
This may actually be worth traveling. I think it is. So where would we go? That's the question, isn't it? I'd like to find some areas that are tougher. I mean, yeah, this is nice. Actually, you know what? This is like perfect. It's 22 days away. It's seven and a half skulls. So lots of good challenge variability there. Owned by Comstar. Cool. We may or may not be fighting Comstar. <laughs> That's always exciting if we do. And it's only 22 days. We are going to take a financial report on the way, but that sounds good. It is well past time, however, to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we will travel on over. We will hit this financial report. We'll wait one day for the Annihilator to finish up. And we will start fighting in some colder climates. Hopefully without Highlands. And some more difficult enemies. That would be great. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.